Keynote has probably the most extensive preferences menu in the iWork suite and definitely, I think, the most functional preferences menu that will allow you to get in there and really change the behavior of the slideshow as you view it, work with it, and present it. So to get there, you can go to Keynote and choose preferences, or you can use the shortcut command comma. And we'll start out on the left side with the general preferences. So up here at the top, some things that are common to most of the iWork apps, you can decide whether or not you want to show the theme chooser or whether or not you want to use a specific theme every time you create a new document. Most of the time with Keynote, you'll probably want to choose a theme, but if you're using a blank theme or if you create your own theme that is you know, germane to your company that you're working with, you might want to have it automatically start up with that. Underneath, we have, again, just some common iWork app elements about the curves, the lists. If you are creating bulleted lists in Keynote and you don't like autocorrect, it's, you find yourself that you're using names a lot or something like that, that might be why you want to turn that off. Underneath that, you'll find options for saving and adding media. One thing that's important is that you can actually not copy the movie files and audio files into your document if you don't wish. So you can have them be part of the keynote presentation, but then if you're talking about multiple gigabytes of movie files and you're using the full quality or full resolution, you might want to link to them instead of actually copying them and making them part of the presentation. This way, you and another person working on another computer with the same media can shuttle the keynote file back and forth and just leave the media on your desktop or wherever it is that you're storing it. You don't have to worry about emailing gigabytes of video, that type of thing. The slideshow scaling, now it's going to automatically scale the slideshow to fit your display. And a lot of times the most common thing you'll find is if you're presenting your slideshow in an older room with an older projector, that is not a 16 by 9 ratio. So if you made a 16 by 9 slideshow and you've got a 4.3 standard TV resolution projector, uh, Kino will automatically adjust and scale the slideshow to fit the display. Now just keep in mind that when you have that check that there is a chance that if you're working with a different display size than you originally authored the slideshow on, that some elements might overlap or not show up in the place that you expected them to. So that's why they give you the option to disable that. Motion blur is a nice little effect for the animations to make it a little more film-like, but it's not supported on every single Mac and it does use a little bit of CPU power, so you might want to think about that. And then finally, the presenter display. We're going to get deep into the presenter display in this course, so uh, you'll probably want to have that enabled because there's a lot of really cool options you can use when you're using a TV or a projector as a second display for your Mac. Now, when interacting, if you want to lock it down so that people can't fast forward or scrub through the movie, this is where you can do that. So if you have some movie animations and things that you don't want people to be able to scrub through, you can disable it. So you can decide to have playback controls or not. You can also disable mission control dashboard and other things. So just kind of basically locking down other people's ability to use the screen for other things. So if you're an event photographer and you're bringing a laptop to a wedding and you want it to show a photo carousel, then you can actually disable it so that people cannot go to dashboard, can't go to mission control or anything. They're stuck in this slideshow, which is what you want. And for that, you might even want to have a password required to exit the slideshow. So if they try to exit the endless loop that you've created of your pictures from this event that you're shooting, then they can't unless they enter the password in. So you'll, you'll know with confidence that this display will show this presentation on loop until you get there to physically disable it. The rulers and the alignment guides are very important, and here's where you can change the color of them and choose what you want to show up in the alignment guide, whether you want it to be the object edges, object center, if you want everything to be aligned. So that's what we're talking about is when you're moving an object, you'll see those automatic yellow lines that are showing up, letting me know that I'm lined up with other things, with the center of the document, with the center of the page, with the edge of the object, all that stuff. So that's something that's important to consider. And finally, the remote place. So here's where you can pair with Keynote Remote, which is now no longer a standalone app, but built into Keynote for the iOS device. So once you've got that enabled, if you pop it up on an iOS device, you'll be able to select your iOS device and link it up. And again, we'll get into that a little bit deeper as we start to explore using your iOS device as a remote. So that's the preferences menu in Keynote. And as you can see, there's definitely quite a few things in there, a little bit more than your typical iWork app, because Keynote is a little bit more involved.